Shortly before my last video, I got let go by my previous company. So I was focusing on finding a job lately. <sighs> still be algorithms, I still haven't got any offer after more than a month. So I decided to publish a new video to release some stress. Sorry for the delay. After getting kicked out from my previous company without any notice, I got annoyed by looking at the working environment on my MX Linux. So I decided to change it. This time, I want to play some games right away. So I chose to go with a rolling release distribution. And because I have covered some Arch-based Linux distributions on my channel already, I decided to go with OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And this is what happened. My plan was to be able to play games as fast as possible. So the first thing I did was to install NVIDIA driver. Learning from my father, I didn't start with online search engine right away. Instead, I used the welcome page. I found the official guide which talks about how to install it in the first paragraph of the readme section. So I followed the step there and installed it without any issue. Then I set up Lutris and Ubisoft Connect. But for some reason, Assassin's Creed just won't start after the installation. I couldn't see any pop-up error or error logs from the console, so I switched to using Steam. After installing the game on Steam, it is complaining about not having Ubisoft Connect this time. After several failing attempts, I finally found someone mentioning something called Proton Tricks, which ended up solving this issue. Proton Tricks is an easy to use tool for Steam users on Linux, so let me quickly demonstrate how it works. To install it, I started from this GitHub page. But for OpenSUSE, there is also a wiki page dedicated for all the gaming tools where it contains Proton Tricks. So I just installed it. After launching it, I found that there is a warning saying something about 64 bits and 32 bits compatibilities for applications. After consulting with the GitHub page, I found it can be ignored. So I continued choosing the game in Steam. It then gave me some applications to choose from. I saw Ubisoft Connect here and proceed with the installation. The game ran smoothly after that. Given that Arch Linux is infamous for not being stable if the user updates it frequently, even though I haven't got any kind of experience like that, I still want to try if OpenSUSE can break if I update it frequently. So after the installation, as long as I have some time to do it, I update the system. Now it has been over a month since the installation. I still haven't run into any issue. I know it is quite risky to do this during my job hunting period, but I'm glad to report that I'm still happily using my VPN, Bluetooth headset, and a USB webcam going to virtual interviews online. I also played Assassin's Creed last night, and no issue was found. Probably one month is not a long enough time to have the updates breaking the system, or I'm just lucky enough that no package I installed in this installation has shipped a breaking change yet. I remember the previous times when I tried out OpenSUSE. I was always confused by the YAS2 program. It is a super awesome configuration tool with a kick-ass graphical interface, which can configure almost everything in this system. I tried using it to manage package and repository before. I remember that I could download some config files from OpenSUSE website which can enable repository and install packages through a graphical interface with only a few clicks. But I guess I was just too familiar with the terminal commands in other distributions to manage packages. I never got used to using the GUI workflow, which means I always end my journey with OpenSUSE prematurely. This time, however, to make my journey last longer, I decided to start using Zephyr in Terminal to manage the packages. So whenever I'm reading a wiki page, I always scroll to the part where it mentions the Zephyr commands. I found that the experience this time is much more in line with those I had on other systems. It no longer gave me the itches where I cannot reach, and I could immediately grasp the concept behind each command. Call me an old school but I'd like to thank the SUSE team for not ditching the traditional way of package management for people like me 
while trying to innovate for fresh users who prefer using GUI at the same time. Additionally, I tried installing applications like Sublime, Brave, and Vivaldi browser. I found the official installation guide from these teams for OpenSUSE is quite up to date. In some scenarios, it was because OpenSUSE is using RPM packages like Fedora. But I have encountered a situation where the RPM package won't work on OpenSUSE, Vivaldi browser. But I'm surprised to see that Vivaldi team also created a dedicated installation guide for OpenSUSE to install it from their own repository, which helped me greatly, as I wanted to use this browser before I could figure out how to install Codex on OpenSUSE. I realized in the end that OpenSUSE is probably just as popular as other big names like Ubuntu or Fedora. And because I have never used it thoroughly enough, so I personally have some bias against it, thinking it is not as popular. I'm grateful for taking a chance to have a better look at this distribution now. I think I will keep using it until I find a job. These are all my use cases so far. Without any job, I don't have the test environment for corporation VPNs this time. So I will end this video right here. I hope I can have a job lined up soon enough to have my spare time focus back on making more videos for you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.